Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we take a look at the fundamentals of SketchUp. Today, we're going to take a look at the Tags window. So Tags is how you group together different entities inside of SketchUp and control things like their visibility or the line types used to show those things. So let's hop in and take a look at how to use it right now. Okay, so I just, for the sake of simpl simplicity here, just created a handful of shapes. I got a, a box here, a cylinder, or tube shape here, and then a pyramid. Um, I went ahead and created different uh, tags for each of these. Creating a tag is pretty simple. If you go into the tags folder or window here, you can hit the plus and then it'll create tag one and then I can just type in a new new title there. It will give you the ability to sort by ascending or descending alphabetical order. So I can hit the little name here and it'll switch it. So the first letter box is on top down through tube or switch it so tube through box. You'll notice that untag stays at the top. There's a reason for this and we'll be talking about that as we go through here and start using this. So one thing I should point out first before we go any further is this term tags. Tags was introduced a couple versions ago, so it is possible if you're using an older version of SketchUp, you might see the group layers instead of tags. Um, also older training videos, if you look at a video and it talks about putting things on layers, what they're referring to is what is now called tags. It didn't make sense to have something called layers because layers are things that lay on top of each other, one layer on top of another, which makes sense if you're using a 2D editing program. You can put one picture on top of another. You can't really do that in 3D space. In 3D space, things exist, well, in 3D. So if you want to put something in front of something else, you have to arrange it in 3D space, like this box is now in front of my cylinder. It really doesn't make sense to have something called layers because they don't lay on top of each other. What tags primarily do is set visible attributes. So what we can do with this is tags allow me to do things like toggle whether or not it's something is visible or a group of things are visible. So for example here, I'm going to select this box and I have entity info open here and I can see in entity info that this box is on the tag box. The cylinder right here is, oh, I guess I should call the tube, is on the tube tag. And then this pyramid is on its own tag also. So if I come over to tags and I turn off box, for example, the box disappears. So it doesn't actually go away. Uh, I'm just hiding it from view. So there's a couple reasons you might want to do this. One is if I, you know, I'm working on the cylinder and the box keeps getting in the way, I could turn it off. The other thing is that SketchUp doesn't have to draw things to the screen if they're not turned on. So if you have a big complex model, like I'm, you know, I'm drawing an entire neighborhood, with all the houses, cars, trees, everything, you might want to be careful about what you have turned on because if you have too much stuff turned on, it is going to take SketchUp longer to draw to the screen, which will create lag. So if you were to put all your trees on a, onto a single tag and turn it off for the most part, it wouldn't have to draw those pieces. So um, there's definitely a practical sense to creating these tags. Some of the other things you can do with tags. Um, I can actually go in here tag by tag and change the line type. So see, see this pyramid right here. I could come over here and I could change my dashes from default to let's do like a dashed line type. Now anything on this tag, anything that's under pyramid, will get this dashed line type. So that means if I create a new shape, let's go ahead and I'll create a, a different box and I will push pull that up and then I will select it all, make it a group, and then I'll tell this group I want to put it onto the pyramid tag. Look what happens as soon as I do that. If I deselect, it gets that dash line type also. So tag controls not only visibility and turn both off and back on, but it also controls the line types. So one thing you'll notice now is I did put this into a group before I put it in the tag. That's generally the way you're going to want to do this. So this piece, this piece, all the pieces that actually make up this box are still marked as untagged. Raw geometry, that is faces, edges, curves, shapes, should stay on untagged. 
you apply a tag to an item after it is put into a group or component. There's videos online, I'll let you research that if you want to find the, the use cases where it causes a problem to start tagging loose geometry. But it's one of the reasons that untagged always stays at the top here. It's always up here because uh, it should always be active. So this little pencil here indicates that it's the active tag. That means anything new that I draw to the screen will go to the untagged tag. Let's say that again. <laughs> By having the pencil here, anything I draw new on the screen will show up on the untagged tag. And that is the way it should be. You do want to keep doing it that way. All right, so some of the other things we can do here. Um, if I hit tag folder, um, I'm going to create a tag folder and I'm going to call it shapes. So all I did was I hit, I hit new tag folder. I'm going to type shapes. And then I'm going to grab this box. I'm going to put it under shapes. I'm going to grab this tube. I'm going to put it under shapes. And what that lets me do, this is kind of cool because for one thing, it helps me clean up my tags folder so all my shapes collapse. I can bring it back down by hitting a little down arrow. But I can also toggle them all off or on at once. I can still come in here and individually turn individual pieces off. But this lets me set all on, all off quickly and easily. So you can see that, that it did honor the fact that the tube was turned off. It did keep my dashed lines there and I can make those kind of changes. So it's a great way again like if you're looking at a big architectural building to put all your doors and windows into maybe separate groups. First floor doors, first floor windows, second floor doors, second floor windows, but then I could put all those door window components into a single folder so I can flip them on and off real easy that way. So tag folders are huge help in organizing a model. So I should point out too that this doesn't mean individual pieces can't be turned on and off. So I have these two are in the same folder under the shapes. I can actually come in here and hide an individual piece and then unhide that piece. That is absolutely possible. But this just gives you more control, like broad sweeping control over what's visible. The other thing you can do in here, if I hit this little fly out right here, I have this color by tag option. If I click that, it will go in and temporarily color code everything on my screen according to these color tags over here. Now this isn't necessarily a final presentation thing. This is not meant to replace materials or anything like that, but it's a good way to see where things are, what layer things are on. It's a, just as a snapshot, it's real easy to see where things are in my model. The other thing that this is nice for is some people use this to, to color code um, maybe different materials or something like that. So I have maybe all of my, my brass materials on one tag and my wood materials are on another tag and I could flip on color by tag and it will show you each of the materials uh, or everything on the tag based on that. So a very nice option to, to just visually see what you have there. Um, the purge command will get rid of any empty tags. So remember I created that other tag but if I hit purge it'll just go away. The other thing I can do in here is if I want, so I can't really reorder other than dropping things in and out of folders. I can't change because again, it's going to sort alphanumerically, but I can filter. So if I have lots and lots of tags, I've got to find my figures tag, I can type FIG and it will hide everything that doesn't start with FIG. So the sort right here, the search is real helpful when you get a lot of tags. I can also change tags by right click um, I have some collapse options, but I also have delete tag. So if I click delete tag, so right now my figures tag has one thing on it and that's Sumele. If I right click and I say delete tag, it's going to pop up and say, what do you want to do with this? So I can say um, delete everything on here. If I hit OK, then anything that's under the figures tag is going to get deleted. So Sumele will be gone. Or I can say assign to another tag and I can come in here and pick any of the other tags I have. You can see my folder doesn't show up in that list because I can't assign something to a folder, but I can assign it to any of the tags that are in that folder. So if I wanted to take this and, and we'll put, uh, we'll put Sumele onto the pyramid tag along with our other shapes and I hit OK, figures goes away. She changes to purple because purple is the color of the pyramid tag. Also, if I come and zoom in here, she's dashed lines now. So I think that's everything I can think of about 
tags. I'm sure I missed something. If so, please let me know down below because uh, there's a lot to it. Tags are great for having just a top level control tool to set visibility or set line types. Um, it's You still have the ability to go in there and fine tune and turn things on and off. Um, Outliner, which we'll cover in a later video, is a great way to turn individual items on and off. But for broader sweeping control over what's visible on your screen, tags are the way to go. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos every week and you'll be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Most, if not all of our content nowadays is created based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.